Hello again, this is Kevin Ring, and today I'm going to give you a tutorial and show you how to work with what we call relative presets. If you've used the Event Master toolset before, you're, pro you're probably aware of complete presets, which is a um, recollection of all parameters of any armed destination in a moment of time. So this will be your sources, your layers, your effects, your borders, your drop shadows, and you build and recall your presets, switch your show, everyone's happy. Um, there's plenty of videos that cover complete presets. You've probably noticed that we have this other option here called relative presets. Relative presets are a different way of running your system and your show, but they're incredibly powerful, very useful, very flexible, and a lot of fun. So I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration on how to work with relative presets. So what I've done is I've built uh, six sources using six input connectors. I've given them random names, camera one, camera two, graphics, playback, DDR, and I've built a two projector blend or a two connector destination. I've assigned six single link mixing layers to this destination. Now, whenever you're working in relative presets, you do need to have layer management or at least acknowledge your layers. So rather than letting the system define the layers for us by order of operations, layer one, layer two, for example, if I go to the layers tab on the right hand side and expand my destinations, this will show me all of the layers that I have. So for example, I can now drag in layer six with no source applied and then add a source. So now we are working on layer six rather than layer one. If I were to drop in a new layer, of course, will be layer one. If you've explored the layers tab, you may have seen these uh, little eyes here. This is not going to cause the layer to disappear from your screen. Uh, this one actually will on the right. But this is going to tell the layer to not be saved or stored with a relative preset. So this is going to work a little backwards. What we're going to do is we're going to add a series of layers, and then we're going to hide the ones that we do not wish to save. So any layer that has this blue line over it will not be stored in our relative preset. Interesting, but stay with me and I think this will make a lot of sense. So I'm going to do a look of a graphics machine with a camera pip on top of it. So if I were to do this with complete presets and I want to have camera pips, playback pips, with all my different graphics backgrounds, I would be looking at dozens of complete presets to get every possible conceivable option for, for full redundancy. But instead, I'm going to do this with relative presets. So I'm going to do my background layer first. So this is my layer one. So I'm going to hide all of my layers except for layer one. Notice there's now a little blue dash over each layer, including the background. So these will not be stored with the relative preset. I make sure that my preset's set to relative. I'm going to save from preview. And I'm going to call this graphics one background. I can now change the background source to graphics two. And it doesn't even matter about the upper layer because I'm not storing it. So I'm going to do graphics two background. And just to say we did, I'll do playback. Yeah, you know, I'll do the DDR. DDR1 background, and I'll switch that over to DDR2, and DDR2 background, great. Now I'm going to do my foreground. So I already have camera one, I'll add it twice to have my second pip here. And good enough, I won't bother sizing them. So I'm gonna to go to my layers tab, I'm gonna hide everything except for layer two and layer three. So now only these, these two pips will be stored. So we'll go to presets. We're going to call this cam one pip. Change to graphics uh, camera two. Cam two pip. I'll do my playback one. Playback one pip. And playback two. Call this playback two pip. And now this is going to be an interesting one. I want to build a preset where I clear and get rid of my pips. 
So I'm going to physically clear them from my preview page. However, I'm going to make sure that layer two and three are still selected on the relative preset. A little different, but it'll make sense. I'm going to hit save from preview. I'm going to call this clear pip. Cool. So now I have independent background and foreground presets. So if I were to switch through these, here's graphics one, graphics two, DDR1, DDR2, nothing too crazy yet. But now I'm going to show you the power of the relative preset. So now I'm going to introduce the camera two pip. Playback one, playback two, and now with these pips on screen, I'm going to change the background. So now I have full independent control of the background layers without having to worry about what's on the foreground. So now I can change these to camera, and then when I want to, I can even clear the pips. So essentially I have my background layers, my pip layers, and now if I want to, I could add a lower third, um, some type of closed captioning, and really I have defined control of each section of the layer. So rather than doing one full complete preset, I've now split my show up. This is really great if you have a lot of backup sources, uh, a lot of background changes, pip changes, um, if the show is going to be a little bit more on the fly, or if you really just want that flexibility of being able to change things in real time without having to worry about every possible conception of preset that you would need. So that's relative presets, uh, pretty straightforward. Once again, takeaway, pay attention to the layers here, uh, practice them, try them out, and I think you'll get a hang of it and really, really enjoy it. I uh, hope you like this video. See you again next time.